Hello there, Internet. How are you doing today? Um, so as you can see, today we're going to be reviewing a pair of Caribbean blended rums uh, from some rather famous brands and, and distilleries, actually. Um, so the Dorley's is kind of the, going to be the, the, the main star here uh, because this is the rum I picked to kind of represent the blended molasses based rum category um in my sort of quote unquote introduction to rum videos that i made a little while ago um but i couldn't just for, for this video just review that it felt, felt like it needed a sparring partner of some kind now you might think uh the more appropriate sparring partner for dorley's 12 if i was going to do pick an appleton would be of course the appleton 12. Here's why I didn't pick the Appleton 12. Well, first of all, because um, <laughs> my store, actually the, the entire uh, Chicago area apparently, has been unable to get Appleton 12 for a while. Actually, well, uh, strictly speaking, uh, uh, you can't get Appleton 8 here either. But um, how did I get this bottle then? When it seems to be unavailable in Illinois? Good question. Uh, anyhow, so, uh, but the, the main reason is um, Appleton 12 is about 40, 45 bucks right now, whereas Dorley's uh, right now is on sale at Total Wine for usually around 30 bucks. So I, you, need, you need something around that $30 price range to kind of actually be the real competition. And that's Appleton 8 here. All right, so let's, well, let me back up and talk about these things a little bit more. Okay, so um, Appleton 8, this is a, so there was an old Appleton 8, which you couldn't get in the States, by the way. Um, and then it went off market, and now a new version has come back. Um, uh, so what this is, is uh, they're calling this the Reserve. Uh, the nice thing about this is they, one of the things I love about Appleton, I don't know if you can read that on there, but they're, they're clearly stating that the 8 on here means aged a minimum of eight, of 8 years. So no shenanigans with Soleras or anything like that. Um, this is actually an 8-year-old. And basically, it's um, it's a blend of uh, it's all uh, molasses based, but it's a blend of pot distillate and column distillate, right? like really big uh, multi-column industrial, um, you know, molasses distillate. Um, uh, and um, oh, what else do I say about this? so? So it's so this is Jamaican, right? So this is going to be um, this should be a bit more serious on the funk end of things, although it's, it's a blended rum, so don't expect too much that way. This is really going to be led probably by the oak. Um, and I don't know quite, quite what else to say about this. Uh, yeah, one of these days I'll review the Appleton 12. I don't know why I haven't already. Uh, one of these days I'll grab a bottle when I can get one. And then there's Dorley's 12, um, which at the moment in the U.S. is a total wine exclusive how did i get a bottle of it when there's when there's no total wine anywhere near me uh good question um anyway so this is going to be the the Bajan, uh equivalent to the appleton it's also all molasses based and a blend of pot distillate and uh, and industrial column distillate um but you know it's it's their own little little spin on it this is from four square distillery on barbero barbaros this is in fact the um this particular rum this is a very old blend. This actually predates the, the founding of Four Square Distillery in the 90s. Like, they were rum blenders long before they actually started up their own distillery. Uh, but now it is actually 100% Four Square. So this is, think of this as a little brother to uh, the big um, exceptional cast releases. Um, both of these should be uh, all, all ex-bourbon cask. I'm guessing there's been a fair bit of, of recharring going on, but I'm not really sure. Anyways, let's get into this. Oh, and both bottled at forty-three uh, percent, which is very nice. Um, the I did have a little sample of Dooley's Twelve from a couple of years ago, that was bottled at forty percent. So I'm, which I actually already re really liked. So I'm hoping this will be a little bit better. Right, let's get into this. Um, Appleton Estate Reserve, eight-year-old Jamaican rum, probably bottled twenty twenty-one, but I'm not really sure. Okay, so it smells like a blended rum. So I'm getting, uh, first of all, it's the cola notes. There's lots of cola notes uh, in this, like a, like really like RC cola and um, also rust. I, always, I, I get rust a lot in 
th this style of blended rum. It's kind of a dead giveaway for me when I'm when I'm nosing these things. Um, there's also some vanilla that's kind of tying in with the Coke thing, and then a distinctively Appleton sort of thing. There is a lot of kind of rose character on this. When I tasted the Appleton Hearts, the big expensive Appletons um, that went through Velier uh, a couple of months ago, the there was a a rose jelly note, like like Lebanese rose jelly thing, which kind of ran through all of them. And I'm getting a little bit of that. But it's also, there's there's like a, just a straight up rose water thing and a little bit of a Turkish delight thing going on too. So lots of lots of different rosiness kind of aspects going on there. Um, married to the cola and the vanilla, vanilla, the oaky stuff. Some bananas foster, a little bit of, um, what is that? There's something almost oat-like in here, but it's not... Um, it's not really oatmeal. It's more like Cheerios. Um, so yeah, let's call it a Cheerios note. Little little cherry coming through. Um, more like a, a, a Kirsch, Kirschwasser thing. Um, that's from the oak. Lots of coffee notes. Uh, kind of like a flat white kind of thing. Um, but also some black tea in there. So maybe you, you were making... Uh, you're flat white and you decided it needed to be a little bit more exciting so you, you made it with a little bit of, um, I don't know, some awesome tea or something from the cup. That kind of, that note. A little bit of wildflower honey happening. Um, uh, some sweet potato. I mean, so if you come to this rum looking for a big old boatload of, of funk, that's not really what you're getting here. You're getting some really delicate kind of rose notes and like uh, some some fun kind of earthy grungy notes and a lot of wood um and so and that's good it's it's nice it's it's kind of still very fresh and raw alongside that big old dose of woodiness oh uh yeah i should warn you i'm going to taste this and try what it, what it uh tastes like on the palate here we go. Basically follows the nose. Um, yeah, like a, a, a latte or no, flat white. Um, that kind of rosy note, the, the, the rose jelly, the Turkish delight rose water kind of thing. Um, some honey, the cola notes are definitely in the house. Um, the vanilla notes, that rusty thing, that's still there. There's a sweet tea note this time. So it's, it's not just like that little hint of black tea from the nose. This is more like an overt kind of like southern sweet tea kind of note. Um, the banana foster thing is, is back. Uh, so is the sweet potato thing. Um, the cherry. Um, there's not a lot of, of stuff that would immediately make this uh, identify, aside from the rust thing and and the floral thing. And, and um, uh, there's not a lot of like really overtly rummy kind of, kinds of note in here. There's like, maybe like one fennel seed maybe like throw a dash of sea salt in there. Um, this really feels like a rum kind of, you know, built for, built for bourbon drinkers. And that's okay. That, that can still be delicious. Uh, and I'm okay with that. And I need to add a drop of water to this, but I just realized I left my dropper. Okay. I'm gonna sit back down. I'm still in my jammy pants. All right, uh, so I'm going to add a couple drops of water to this, and we'll come back to it. Don't want to go overboard. It's only 43%. And I'm moving on to the, um, uh, sorry, the Dorleys, the 12-year-old. It's been being kind of a weird day. Uh, Dorleys, fine old Bar Barbados rum, age 12 years, 43%. Um, probably also bottled circa 2021. Here we go. On the nose. 
Interesting. So, I mean, there's if I start naming off uh, flavors, it'll initially sound very similar. And in a way, they are very similar. Um, uh, this is a little bit more aromatic, though. So, it's got lots more... How do I have with this? The floral notes are much more... Um, well, there's a lot more of them. But it's not to say that the Appleton wasn't floral, but it was really pushing on the kind of rose side of things. This is much more like you're walking into a flower shop, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, lots of flowers. Beyond, but beyond that, you're getting, okay, some, some similar notes. That the rust thing is back, the cola thing. Um, uh, it's more peppery, this. Um, it's like kind of a white pepper note. Uh, some cherry again. More like actual cherry this time than, than, than Kirsch. Black tea, some um, some old coffee grinds. Honey, uh, maybe like a, just a hint of, of oliviness, like throw one black olive into this. Slightly green too, throw, throw, so throw a Brussels sprout in here. And um, there's a kind of anise thing going on, but it's almost like a, more like a bitters, so so like a Peychaud's bitters kind of note um, hanging out here. But it's really dominated by the, the, the flowers and the, the kind of cola stuff. Just a, that little bit of, um, um, I mean, so they're, they're very similar, but there's different tones going on. It's like, you know, um, opera nerds and I like to talk about different kinds of sopranos. You know what I mean? It's that. Uh... Um, okay, let's try this on the palette. Here we go. Hmm. At least initially, this feels a little bit lighter and thinner than um, the Appleton 8 does. I mean, it's still very good, but I'm just... There's a, there's a little bit of a difference in the mouthfeel. Um, it feels... Yeah, a little bit thinner. It feels like it's 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 pushing um, or holding in the front of the mouth a little bit more. Um, I don't get a whole lot of action behind like the uh, whatever the teeth are right in front of your molars. Like that's kind of where this stops. Um, but it's still nice. Again, very floral, lots of cola, rust, honey. Yeah, banana cherry, coffee, tea kinds of stuff. Um, there's, an there's an interesting kind of like um, tobacco kind of thing going on, like a, like a Virginia Flake tobacco. Actually, it's kind of all, also there on the nose. It's more subtle on the nose, though. Um, let me try this one more time. It's nice, it's nice. Um, there's, there's some, I hate to use this note, but there's some brown sugar in this um, and some vanilla. So we're also heading in, into a bourbon drinker friendly direction. Um, yeah, I'm a, little, I'm a little surprised at how, like, uh, maybe thin is the wrong word. It just feels kind of shallow in my mouth. Um, it just kind of feels like it's not pushing back as much as it should. I'm gonna give this, but uh, we shall see if that improves with water. So at this point, in the proceedings, I feel like these two are kind of neck and neck, which is sort of what I was expecting. I mean, same price point, um, similar level of, of really good producers. Um, um, but at this point, for me, the, the Appleton is winning on the palate and the Dorleys is winning on, on the nose. So we shall see what happens in uh, round two, now with a splash of water. All right, back to the Appleton on the nose. Here we go. Ooh, okay. So this is now throwing, uh, I mean, it's mostly the same on the nose, but this is now throwing a, a, a little bit of tobacco itself. There's a little bit of a, of a burly note kind of going on. Yeah, like burly Virginia Flake, um, like a McBaron or something. Um, and there's kind of a sweet potato pie aspect happening now. So the, the sweet potato note was already there, 
But now there's like a, a desserty aspect of it that's coming out. And some more sweet tea happening now. Interesting. I wonder if there's more, a little bit of a higher pot still component in this versus the, the Dorleys. Um, it's just, uh, it's not actually, the aroma, it's not throwing it out as much aromatics, but it feels weightier somehow. I don't know how to put it. But let's try this out in the palette. Here we go. Palette stays mostly the same, really. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it. Huh. It is. Um, the palette is more punchy, and it's it's uh, sort of more. Yeah, I don't know. More more penetrating, um, if that makes sense, than than the Dorleys by just a little bit. This is a good rum. I like this. I like this a lot. Um, I don't. I don't think it's necessarily better than the Dorleys. Well, we'll see that in a minute. Um, but it's a very good rum. I'm going I'm to give this 83 out of 100. Um, and in, in that kind of, you know, in in the category of aged rum, because let, let, so let me add a footnote here. The real value in when you're paying below 30 bucks is unaged rum. Like unaged rums can absolutely crush, I mean, whiskeys, other, anything you can bring up against them at twice the price point. Um, there's just a lot of really good unaged rums right now. But when you're limiting yourself to the aged stuff, uh, this presents pretty good value for itself. Um, I like it. It feels versatile. It's got some of the, the weight, and the 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 punchiness from those Appleton Hearts I tried, but it also just feels like you can, you know, you could throw this in a in a mojito and not feel bad about it. Um, yeah, I like this. Uh, Eighty three points. Let's move back to the Dorleys. See what's happening here. So what I'm hoping is that the uh, the water will. Um, open up the palate a little bit more and give it more sort of um, a, a better finish and kind of better mouthfeel. But let's see what happens on the nose. Yeah, the tobacco and the flowers kind of come out a little bit more. Not, that, not to say they weren't there before, but now they're really kind of taking over. It's really a lovely nose. I love the, I just love the aromatic nature of this. Yeah, um, on the palate, here we go. Oh, there we go. Sometimes wishes come true. Uh, most of the same profile, except it gets a hair bit more full-bodied, a hair bit more uh, uh, penetrating in the way it sort of attacks my mouth. And the finish is, is a little bit better. It gets more peppery and kind of longer lived. Um, Again, these are very close, but um, if you give this a couple drops of water, I would give it the edge. I would give this uh, 83 plus out of 100. Um, I'm pleased. This, these are both uh, quite good, and um, you know, assuming you live in a state other than Illinois and or live nearby a total wine, uh, accessible. Um, yeah, good, good little show. Um, 83 points for the Appleton 8, and 83 plus for the Dorley's 12. But the big question, of course, is what happens when we give the Appleton that extra four years of age. So I'll, I'll see if I can get moving on that. And uh, thanks for watching, and cheers.